A man was caught at the airport trying to smuggle cocaine inside an artificial penis. And parents are angry after a school asked 13-year-old children to plan their own funeral as homework. And Cambodia demands $3,000 coronavirus deposit from arriving travelers. These are the weird news stories for Monday. This is Weird AF News. Say it with me. Weird AF News. Only weird news. That's all we do. Yes. Hey, Mainstream News. Listen to Weird AF News with Jonesy. A man was caught at the airport smuggling cocaine inside an artificial penis. A British man was caught at Brussels airport while trying to smuggle some cocaine into Belgium. He tried to hide it inside an artificial penis, and he's been sentenced to many months in prison. The man was arrested when he landed at the Brussels airport on a flight from Jamaica, man, where they got that ganja. Well, apparently they got some cocaine as well, and he put it in his artificial penis. Do they mean dildo? That's what I want to know. Are you trying to say dildo? Artificial penis? Just say dildo. I think we're talking about a dildo here. Smuggling things in a dildo. He tested positive for cocaine, after which the man was transferred to a hospital for a more in-depth investigation. While at the hospital, doctors and police officers established that the man had been equipped with an artificial penis. Equipped? You mean he had it in his carry-on? Or was it strapped to his person? Perhaps it was inside his sock. Where? (laughs) How was he equipped with the artificial penis? I need to know that information. Also, the artificial penis, can we just call it a dildo? Is it a dildo? I'd like to know. What is the difference between an artificial penis and a dildo? Wow, I can't believe how many times I said the D word on here. Inside the artificial artificial penis, I guess we'll call it, was 127 grams of white powder, which was later identified as cocaine. The man stated that he had visited his mother in Jamaica. And an acquaintance there had offered him that cocaine, man. He said he took that cocaine with him to use it on himself only at the home. <laughs> How's that Jamaican accent? Is that okay? No, he said it's not for me to give to others, just using it at home. I don't think you're going to get out of possession of cocaine if you just tell the police. No, it's just for myself to use at home. It's my personal stash, guys. Come on. You can't arrest me for my personal stash. I mean, really. I don't have the intent to sell this. No, it's just for me and my mother. (laughs) The public prosecutor's office demanded a prison sentence of 36 months. Ooh. Uh, The defense asked to suspend the sentence as this man had some health problems. Health problems, huh? Health problems, perhaps, that a bit of cocaine can cure. Right, man? He's a little lethargic. (laughs) There's like some confusing facts about this story. Like what he tested positive for cocaine. Wait, coming in from the airport, you test people, you you take people's blood or piss test for drugs and you find, <laughs> like, is this what's happening? Of course, anyone coming in from Jamaica is going to test positive for something. They were just in Jamaica. Hello. Jamaica's great, man. You're going to lively up yourself with Weird AF News, man. Bob Marley, anybody? Who likes Bob Marley? Everybody loves Bob Marley. Come on and snort it up. Chick up, chick up, chick up. Cocaine penis. <laughs> Parents are upset after a school tells 13 year olds to plan their own funeral as homework. <laughs> Oh, parents. Parents were furious after their 13-year-old children were told to plan their own funeral for some homework, including picking out flowers and a coffin. (laughs) Oh, this must have been happening in America. The religious studies homework was given to year eight students at St. Paul's Catholic School in Leicester. Leicester? During lockdown. Oh, this is the UK. Oh, I'm surprised this isn't an American school. I really am. Where the teachers are stupid. The pupils were given a form where they had to make choices for their funeral and give reasons why, including picking their favorite music or hymn and choosing flowers for a a memorial. (laughs) Yes, yes. 
Tell us, Paul, why did you choose that matte black coffin? What is it about that? You like the style? Um, and surely, Esmeralda, you, you don't want to be uh, cremated and sprinkled over a soccer field. Is that true? I'm sorry, this is England. A football field. Is this, is this really what you're going for? The children also had to decide whether they would be buried or cremated and pick their own coffin. The assignment asked, Where would you like your body to be buried? Where would you like your ashes to be scattered? Other questions asked the children who they would invite. What kind of clothing would they want guests to wear? Uh, concerned mother Gemma Marston posted a picture of this homework assignment on Facebook and asked, Anyone else feel that getting them to plan their own funeral is a bit too much, or am I being over the top here? Parents responded, saying they would be livid if their child received such a homework assignment. One person wrote, Yes, kids need to start understanding death, but at least discuss this with the parents first. And as for homework, does that imply a lesson was taught on this? Other parents felt 13-year-olds were too young to be given this type of assignment altogether particularly during the coronavirus pandemic when many families have had loved ones actually die. Somebody named Tabby, Tabby McGailey, wrote, This is disgusting, especially seeing as we are in a pandemic and thousands are dying. I gave Pat, Tabby a Irish accent just because it sounded like a very Irish name. I agree with Tabby. This is disgusting. One Facebook user wrote, Especially at a time like this, 50,000 people have died, not to mention the children have been stuck in at home. A teacher responded saying, I wouldn't do this. Some children can be very susceptible about ideas and uh, when it comes to death and funerals. You don't always know if one of your pupils, pupils have, has had a recent loss. And this sort of thing can be very triggering for the pupils. It can be very upsetting. The school has since contacted one of the parents to apologize, saying that the homework have been sent out in error. <laughs> an error? Yeah, we doubt that. Hey, look, you know, we live in a world where we want to keep death very far from our children. I don't, and, and you know, I don't know if that's the right answer either. I think uh, we need to embrace death as part of the cycle of life. Um, and, uh, but an, a, a homework assignment like this in... Uh, <laughs> in today's environment is a little alarming. I agree. If I was a parent and my 13-year-old came home and was like, hey, mommy, can you help me uh, pick out flowers for my funeral? I'm, I'm, I like peonies. How do you say them? Pennies? Ponies? How do you pronounce this flowery word? <laughs> I would be so upset. Uh, I would immediately drive to the school and heads would roll for sure, for sure. But I'm not a parent. That's not my profession. So I'd love to hear from the parents what you think of this. Uh, giving kids planning their own funeral as a homework assignment. Call the show and let me know what you think of this. 646-450-2012. Cambodia demands a $2,400 coronavirus deposit from arriving travelers. As tourism slowly resumes around the world, many nations are still reluctant to open their borders, with Cambodia imposing perhaps the toughest entry requirements of any country. The Southeast Asian country is popular with backpackers and most renowned for the complex Angkor Wat. And if you guys aren't familiar with Angkor Wat, uh, please Google that. It's one of the uh, most mysterious buildings on the planet and very, very sophisticated. Oh, it's a place I'd love to visit. So according to the latest bulletins on Cambodia, foreign travelers must pay a 2,400 pound or $3,000 deposit for COVID-19 service charges at the airport upon arrival. What appears to be the first coronavirus deposit can be paid in cash or by credit card. The FCO, I don't know what that company is, oh, foreign something, says once deductions for services have been made, the remainder of the deposit will be returned. But those deductions may be steep, especially if another passenger on the same flight happens to test positive for the coronavirus. Oh, boy. So somebody else on the flight could make you have to pay? How does this work? Mandatory fees begin with a $5 charge for transport from the airport to a testing center. The COVID-19 test itself costs 100 bucks. The traveler must then pay $30 for an overnight stay at a hotel. And the same, again, for three meals a day while waiting for the test results. Okay, okay, so far, okay. 30 bucks for a, a hotel, 100 for the test, I gotcha. 
With luck, the traveler will only have to pay about $132 of that amount that was deposited. They must then self-isolate for 14 days in their chosen accommodation. Oh, geez, what's that going to cost? What is? I mean, you're going to go for a vacation and spend 14 days in self-isolation? I mean, forget going there, I think. But listen to this. If one passenger on their flight tests positive for coronavirus, everyone on the same flight is quarantined in government-approved accommodation for two weeks at a cost of $1,176, including meals, laundry, and sanitation services. They must also pay another $100 for a second test. This, <laughs> this is another 1,021 pounds. If the traveler happens to be the coronavirus-positive patient... They will have to take up to four tests at another $100 each, as well as a $3,150 for treatment at the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital in the capital. This busts the deposit limit, which is why Cambodia also imposes a requirement for $50,000 of travel insurance coverage for medical treatment. If the unfortunate arrival happens to pass away from COVID-19, the cremation service charges $1,500. This is crazy. The FCO travel advice concludes, if you are not able to submit to these monetary requirements, you should think carefully about whether to travel to Cambodia at this time. Well, Cambodia, you really don't want any foreigners. <laughs> you don't want any travelers whatsoever. I don't blame you. I really don't blame you. Um, if I'm... If I'm in another country, I, you know, I would, I don't want just anybody coming in here, especially Americans right now. Americans are just like the most tainted of anyone with this pandemic. <laughs> you can't let an American in your country. Are you crazy? You could, you could even have like a sliding scale depending upon the country you're entering from. Like if you come from a country where everyone wears masks, then it's only like a $500 deposit. If you come from the United States where <laughs> no one wants to wear a mask, yeah, fifty thousand dollars, please. This is, this is what you have to deposit. Jokes, guys, jokes. But in all seriousness, what do you think about this uh, coronavirus deposit? You think this is reasonable? Would you pay such a deposit in order to go on a vacation? Are you that desperate for a vacay right now? Um, call the show six four six four five zero twenty twelve. Weird news, baby. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Hey, man, you know what I be doing in the right on the beach. We are smoking them spliff, man. Listen, weird day of news with me. Yeah, boy. Liking them podcasts, man. Yeah. Irie, man. <laughs> what do you guys think of my Jamaican accent? Jonesy does some accents. None of them very well. Some of them pretty good. I got a review. Yes, and I just love reviews. Someone gave me five stars. Who the heck is it? Oh, it's Mr. Grant Brown. Yes, Grant Brown. This is a review on Stitcher. You guys can leave reviews on Stitcher. If you listen on Stitcher, leave me a review. You can do a screenshot like Grant did and then email it to me, funnyjones at gmail.com, and I'll give you a shout out. I'll read your review. I'll actually sing it. I'm going to sing it. The review title is I Love You, Jonesy. Just the, I'm going to do it a, like a, a, let's do a reggae song. Just a silly comedian reading daily news stories. Which is every bit as glorious as it sounds. Jonesy seems like a genuinely good guy just doing his thing. Irie, blood clot. From what I can tell, he rarely does any research. <laughs> I rarely do any research on the articles. So it's pretty much just him reacting to things. Cracking jokes and occasionally the occasionally bursting into song, song, song. <laughs> Indeed, man. And then he writes, I subscribe to Weird AF News as a Google Home News source, which is part of my good morning routine. Did you guys know you could do that? You can add me to your good morning routine. Uh, 
just the idea that I'm part of somebody's good morning routine, that's just, that just blows my mind. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever be part of somebody's good morning routine. I've been a part of a lot of people's, oh God, you're here, morning routine. <laughs> uh, and then he writes, so I'm usually listening to Jonesy during my morning poop. Think of me, Jonesy. I poop naked. Oh, you, Grant Brown, I'm thinking of you now, pooping naked. This is terrible. How do I get this I, this image out of my head? I can't. I can't do it. Uh, thanks so much, Grant, for leaving that review. Um, I hope you enjoyed my my reading of it. Did you guys understand any of that? Um, please leave me a review. I, I love that. It's a good time for all. And You never know what's going to happen. You never know what I'm going to do with it. I just kind of work my way through it. I, I want to thank those of you who called the show. Yes, uh, Michael from... Iowa City, there was, uh, who else? Oh, Sparky and Gus and Nathan? Was it Nathan? Um, thanks for calling the show. I put the um, put the calls after this if you want to listen to those. Uh, thanks to everybody who reached out to me over the weekend. Appreciate y'all. I hope and I pray that you enjoyed that Florida Friday episode. I pray, I pray to the Lord above that you enjoyed that Florida Friday episode, that you listened with your cohorts, with your coworkers, with your wife, with your ex, with your... With your landlord, whoever it is that you might have listened to the Florida Friday episode, spread the word, spread the gospel of Florida Fridays, my friends. Spread the gospel of love in the degenerate state of Florida. I tell you right now, the world needs to hear about this place. It's bringing down humanity, I tell you, but we can lift it up, you know. <laughs> I don't know where all that came from. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Caffeine. Um. <laughs> and a little ganja man. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Florida Friday episode. Thanks to anyone who sent me Florida Friday stories. I always appreciate those. And uh, please check out the Patreon and support me. Um, Patreon.com slash Weird AF News. And join the little group of patrons. My little mad group of weirdos in there. It's a nice little club. Join the club, you know. It doesn't cost very much. And you get that nice feeling that you're supporting me as I uh, move off into my Weird AF empire. Um, if you enjoy the, the podcast five days a week, as I know you do, buy Jonesy a cup of coffee a month. What's wrong with that? You'll feel good about it. Don't you want me highly caffeine so I can lively up myself by drinking that Joe man? Don't you want a little bit of that? That's my... <laughs> it's one of the weirdest outros ever. Uh, follow me on the gram, Instagram. It's at Funny Jones on Twitter, at Funny Jones on Facebook. It's Comedian Jonesy. And... Uh, the email's funnyjones at gmail.com, which is also my PayPal if you want to buy me a cup of coffee or a sandwich that way. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, guys. Tell a friend about the podcast if you really want to help out. You know, we spread it word of mouth around here. That's how we do it around here. We spread it around word of mouth. You know what I'm saying, man? That's how you get this podcast to spread like wildfire, like a wild brush fire out the back of my farm. You know what I'm saying? Right next to the silo, going out there with my gun, seeing what the hoopla is about as the chickens be crowing and stuff. Chickens don't crow. I don't know what I'm talking about. If you like podcasts, check out Spotify. You can listen to all your favorite artists and podcasts in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. Spotify has a huge selection of podcasts on every topic, including this one that you're listening to right now. And you can easily share what you're listening to with friends on Instagram as well. So download the Spotify app, search for your favorite podcast, and also make sure to follow Weird AF News and never miss an episode. Yes, download Spotify and make your life easier. Hey, Jonesy, uh, my name's Nathan. I just wanted to tell you I really appreciate I sent you an email the other day. I just wanted to tell you that I, I listened to the uh, video or the podcast about a sports man kicking a chicken like a football, and I just thought that was the funniest thing. I had no idea that – well, yeah, I don't, I don't understand how they would know if he kicked it at, like, at, like a football. How would they know if they kicked it like a football or if you just randomly, like, just pushed it aside? Uh, thank you for what you're doing. Bye. Jonesy, this is Gus, the guy that sent you the picture of the COVID mask a while ago. Um, anyway, I just, uh, the guy driving the horse and buggy through, all I have to say is, would they stop a car that had a dog in it? You're going to say that it's unsafe with a horse and buggy and argue that family 
member animal thing, and I agree with you there. But at the same point, they're, they're going to let a dog, a car with a dog in it through the drive through So I don't know. I think it goes both ways, bud. Anyway, that's all I got. Bye. This is the future calling. I'm talking weird AF, weird AF, weird AF news. I'm talking weird AF, weird AF, weird AF news. I'm talking weird AF, weird AF, weird AF news. Hey, Mr. Unlikable, Mr. Lame, Mr. Unfunny. It's uh, Mr. Ridiculous, Michael from Iowa City. Um, I'm sorry that uh, as a caller to the show that I've become part of your negative reviews. Um, Carolyn wrote in and included me, and I'm sorry for that. But I guess she just doesn't get it. You know, the show is called Weird AF News. I think the AF gives some sort of an idea of your personality. It's just not weird news. It's uh, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. It sort of gives an idea that there's going to be some opinion some personality in the show. That's your take on the news. It's not a talking head just simply reading the news stories. You don't just have someone sitting there and reading the story straight. Jonesy puts his personality, his bent, his view of the world, and his lifestyle and opinion and his take on these news stories on the show and into the stories as he reads them. Um, it's not some pre-recorded canned uh, version of the news stories. It's like a live jazz version of the stories that he's performing as he does the, the news stories. And it's absolutely sublime. It's perfection. And Jonesy, congratulations on that. I think all of the weird AF news family understands that and gets it. And Carolyn simply does it. I didn't realize that would become a part of the reviews, but thanks to Eddie Ray Brewster and his wonderful review of your show when he joined the Patreon and his nice words that he said about me. Shout out, Eddie. Thank you so much for that. And uh, Jonesy, if uh, I'm causing negative reviews towards your show, then stop putting me on the outros and the call-ins at the end of the show if you think that's a problem for you. Um, but thank you for your wonderful defense of me. That you would uh, that you would defend me to the end of the earth. I really uh, truly appreciate that. Thank you for your friendship. Anyhow, I uh, just wanted to say thank you for that and appreciate all the Weird AF family. And uh, you know, if they've got a problem with me, have them call the show and give their opinion and uh, drop me from the show if that's an issue. I don't want anything that's going to cause negativity for you, Jonesy. Um, I love you and the Weird AF family, and I hope that's not a, an issue for you. Take care and uh, stay safe as always. And, hey, that Hot Pocket routine, that I thought was, uh, you know, that was funny as far as my opinion. Anyway, take care, everyone. Hot Pockets, Sweet Treat Pockets. Veggie pockets, 